tail. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Whitetail Edge. I'm Ben Rising, your host, and on this episode of Whitetail Edge, number 12 for the year, we're gonna follow along as we followed team member Javen Mollett on a quest for a deer he called Tempo. Now we all know that sometimes not all the hunts that we go on always work out the way we want, or a season even for that matter. And this episode is about a story the Javen has put together with a certain deer that we call Tempo. I've spent a lot of time behind the camera in the past 10 years and I've filmed my fair share of deer kills. But every year I try to do my own homework on a deer here at home on different permission farms. I'm Javen Mullet and this is the story of a 193 inch deer that I called Tempo. I was fortunate enough to hunt this deer for two seasons and ultimately lost to a friendly neighbor, but I've collected so much information and learned so much in this journey and I've had so many people follow the story as I shared live photos and, and live from the field updates on my social media. I've never really been able to manage and focus on one specific property and follow specific bucks from year to year. So basically I just jump from permission property to permission property, trying to find the least pressured area and finding a mature buck to hunt. So the story actually unknowing to me begins in the 2017-2018 season. I got one picture of this deer on January 14. It wasn't until July of 2018 that I saw this buck out in the bean field a few nights coming out of a piece that I had access to and I still really didn't think I would get lucky enough to hunt this deer in his fall range but of course I was going to do everything I can to find him. Sure enough on the morning of October 7 I got my first picture of him hitting a scrape and he was a lot bigger than I thought he was that summer. From that point on I was going to throw all my chips into this basket trying to figure this deer out and little did I know just how much of a cat and mouse game this was gonna be. I started off with just one cell camera right there on that scrape. I got him again seven days later on the 14th, and then from then on it was two to three days. And then October 18, remember the date, was the first time I got daylight pictures of him going into the timber following a doe. I had a hunch he was coming out of a CRP field just to the east behind the camera and I only had one option that I had access to to be able to hunt him there. So that Sunday night, the evening of October 20, my nephew and I went in and did a hanging hunt. Well, we're finally set up here in the tree. It's October 20th and I'm after the buck and I think I'm going to call him Tempo. This is the first evening that we're hunting him. We did a hanging hunt tonight, Jay and I did. We're trying to do the interview between strong wind gusts tonight. We had a wind advisory for good reason. We're trying to hang in here in the, in the stand. We're not up, we're not super high off the ground, but what it is, we have a CRP field that's uh, kind of a north facing hillside with just a little bit of timber all the way around it on the north side. And I've been getting pictures of this really big deer that I'm gonna call Tempo really big mainframe eight pointer on the opposite side of the CRP field mostly at night Thursday night this past week it was the first time that he was daylight so I'm pretty sure he's coming out right here we have a fence that's splitting this alfalfa field between the CRP and there's a fence gap about 40 yards up the fence row from where we're sitting and the fence stops right here in the woods right beside us there's a scrape right there in a trail and a fresh scrape right out in front of us in the field edge of the field so uh, pretty nervous about tonight to be honest with you it's the first time i've ever been really this close to killing such a big deer or 
really this close to figuring out such a big deer. So uh, these new cell cams are the best thing since four pickups. It was so windy that night, gusts up to 45 miles an hour, that we actually ended up getting out of the stand early. It wasn't safe to be in a tree, but it was perfect for us to get in there and hang a stand. Well, we didn't see him tonight. We cut the hunt short by uh, about 25 minutes. It was just so windy that I really wasn't even comfortable in the stand and I just, I didn't feel like he was gonna move before dark in that kind of wind. So uh, we backed out quick. I do have a Spartan cell cam up in there now, so we'll know if he's gonna be in there um, anytime tonight. We hunted it again the following night on October 21st. Thirty minutes before end of legal shooting, my nephew says, there he is, big buck. Sure enough, I look up and he's standing 90 yards away looking right at us. Jay couldn't move to get the camera on him. Luckily, I had my phone out and I ended up getting a bit of video just with my phone and he stood there and stared at us for about three or four minutes before he turned around and just walked up over the hill. After that first encounter, I had I put multiple cell cameras out on different sides of where I felt it was his core area where he was coming out of at that point. And sure enough, October 23rd, I got him coming out of the bedding, heading west about an hour before dark. And I thought, I'm gonna slip in there, the same conditions tomorrow, the same wind direction, he's gonna do the same thing. And he never showed that night, he ended up going out the other direction again at the fence gap, just right at dark. Well, I'm settled in here on the fence gap stand on the edge of the uh, two acre CRP that he's coming out of. And it really makes me appreciate all the camera guys that I've had ready because I really do hate self-filming. Thanks guys. November 5, I was dumb enough to work that day and at four o'clock in the afternoon, I get a picture on my phone from my Spartan at the fence gap and he's walking past my stand at 40 yards. And <laughs> that was a tough one. That night, I ended up with him on pretty much all my cameras on that farm. And I knew that he was just, he was heading out, he was looking for a doe, and he was likely gonna be locked up with the doe for the next week or so. We set the fence cap stand again this morning, saw a couple does, and actually had a good 10 pointer come through that I just started getting pictures of here a couple days ago up on my Spartan at the fence cap. And sure enough, he was MIA for the next seven days, I believe it was. It was the morning of November 10. My buddy Andre went with me to film me that morning and I hadn't had pictures of him for six or seven days. I was gonna hunt just the downwind side of a bedding area and it was cold and windy that morning. I decided, you know what, why don't we sit on top of the hill in the truck and drive around on the road, see if we can't just see him. And luckily we actually ended up seeing him from the road and got some pretty good video of him with a doe coming back onto the farm. Andre and I decided this morning to uh, drive around in the truck instead of uh, sit in the stand this morning in the wind. And I'm glad we did because we ended up seeing Tempo out in the field with a doe. I hadn't gotten pictures of him for about six days. I hunted hard the next few weeks and it just never came together and Tempo literally never did the same thing two days in a row.
gun season. I'm out here after tempo again with my bow. Sitting down here in the bottom of quite a few ravines come in and ridges dump down into this bottom. Opening morning of gun season, I had started two feed piles back in the timber hoping to keep him in there and off the neighbors away from more of the pressure. Sure enough, I was in the stand, had my bow in hand up with the one feed pile, and the does and tempo hit the other feed pile just a couple minutes before daylight, and then the does all headed down my way, and he must have just went straight to bed from there and never showed up. Moving on to late season, he was pretty consistent on feed. It was just never a consistent pattern. He would hit it at any time of night. He would come in from different, all different directions, and I finally concluded that he has multiple bedding sites in his home range and he just bounced from one to the other really every couple days. Fast forward to January 14, he hit the feed right where I had encountered him back in October, right at last light. And I thought surely he was going to bed there and do it a couple nights. I was going to slip in there the next night and hopefully encounter him there. Here goes nothing. Headed in after tempo tonight. Finally got pictures of him right at last light. So I'm going in, try to slip in as quiet as I can. I'll be sitting on the ground. Hopefully he shows himself again tonight. I'm literally belly crawling to where I want to be tonight because I know if I make one wrong move, something's gonna bust me over in that bedding area on that bank and it's gonna be over. Here we go. see me. I'm going to get finished setting up here and get ready. I'm positive I'll see some deer. I just, I need it to be him. Hopefully he get, comes close enough for a shot before it's too dark. Well, I'm getting back to the truck early. It just keeps getting crazier. I didn't see him tonight, but I got pictures of him on the other side of the farm out early. So uh, there was no point for me to sit there any longer. I just backed out. At this point, I knew this was a smart freak deer that likely doesn't have a pattern at all. And I hunted hard the rest of the season. Got sporadic pictures of him, but that was the last time that I got daylight pictures of him in the 2018-2019 season. Coming into the summer of 2019 season, I started a mineral site in the timber where he spent quite a bit of time late season. And I got him there pretty consistently until June 22nd, I believe it was, he moved off onto his summer range. So the summer basically consisted of doing a lot of little micro plots, hanging stands, trying to figure out just how I want to go about doing this. And I really felt like he was likely going to come back to the farm and do what he had done the, uh, the year before. But I still had access to different farms across the road and, and different places that I was trying to get some velvet pictures of him. And sure enough, I ended up getting him two or three times in velvet. Um, just no pattern still. He would hit uh, the one spot two nights in a row and then he would, he would move on. And it was never to where I was able to, I never did get good video of him. I did lay eyes on him from the road twice, I believe it was, just a long ways off. I got some pretty sweet Spartan pictures of him there in velvet a couple nights in a row. And the last picture I got of him in velvet was August 28th, and then he was MIA for a while. I knew he was on the neighbors making his rounds. I know there's quite a few other guys that were getting pictures of him and trying to get on him. Um, at that point, I was trying to move cameras. I wasn't too worried that he wasn't gonna come back onto one of my farms like he had last year. But I was still moving cameras around and I was trying to figure out where he was gonna come on to. It is Saturday, September 22nd, or sorry, it's Sunday, the week before opener here in Ohio. 
and I'm trying to find tempo still. I moved a couple cameras today back around a couple cornfields. I have a bunch of uh, property that I have access to that I haven't even ran cameras on yet. And I know he's in the neighborhood somewhere. I haven't gotten pictures of him now for about three weeks. Um, haven't got pictures of him hard horn at all. So uh, the last picture that I got of him looked like he was just about to shed. So I moved two cameras. Um, the one back here on this uh, secluded cornfield, both of them in a secluded cornfield, um, back on the edge right here. This one is, uh, there's an oak, a um, couple oak trees right here just dropping acorns like crazy. And I don't have a stand back here. I don't have anything prepared back here whatsoever. But I put my Spartan up there on that tree overlooking the edge of this cornfield and, and kind of down into that uh, opening spot. There's a trail that's coming out right here over my shoulder. And um, so this uh, camera should pick up anything that comes out there. I was still trying to put cameras in the right spots, even on, on different farms that I had access to, trying to figure out where he was at. October 6th, the night of October 6th, the exact same night that I had gotten pictures of him on the farm that I hunted him mostly the year before, I got him coming back to that farm on the same night hitting a scrape. So of course I was all excited. He's back on the farm. Um, I expected him to do the same thing he had done the year before. The only difference was we had a big mature bully buck on the farm that was staying in the exact bedding spot that Tempo had used the year before. So I got him on the night of the 6th, and again, two nights later on the 8th, he was back, and after that, he was gone. He was just, I, I, I didn't know where he was at. I was still moving cameras around trying to find him, and I thought, I felt like I knew um, somewhat where he was staying from all the information that I had gotten. So coming into the middle of October, I knew I was going to have to start hunting him regardless whether I was getting pictures of him or not. And I knew he wasn't on the farm that I had hoped he was. I wasn't getting any pictures of him there. So the evening of the 17th, I went in, did a hang and hunt. I'm slipping back in here to a secluded cornfield. I'll be hunting on the back side of it. gap where I got pictures of Tempo about three weeks ago. I haven't got a picture of him now for nine days I think it is. So uh, I'll be able to see quite a ways tonight. Almost due to an observation set more or less. So I hunted that night, saw a couple deer, uh, a couple young bucks and does, but uh, didn't see him. And he was killed the very next night, October 18, 150 yards from my set that I had hunted the night before, right where, within 50 yards of where I had my camera that I got my first hard horn pictures of him, September 23rd. And he ended up shooting him from the ground at 15 yards and he was headed out to the field that I had hunted the night before. And if you remember back to October 18 of 2018, I had gotten my first daylight pictures of him. And it's crazy just from year to year how they do the same thing and, and have the same tendencies exactly to the day he had come back to my farm on the exact same night and he was shot and daylight walked on the exact same day that I had pictures of him the year before. So it's been a pretty crazy ride here for me and I only did get to hunt him one day in the 2019 season before he was shot the following night but uh, I'm very fortunate that the neighbor that killed him Ivan Yoder, super nice guy. He let me come look at him. Um, I had him in my hands and I, I was able to um, just kind of put, put an end to, to the story of Tempo as I know it. I'm very fortunate to just hunt a deer like this and 
it doesn't always happen how we want it. We put so much time, we put so much effort and money and, and into this sport and, and we love it and it's so much fun. But most of the time what you guys see as viewers is successful hunts, um, hunts where we wrap our own tag on a deer. And it doesn't always happen that way. It's not that we don't enjoy just being out there regardless whether we're killing deer or not, but it definitely makes it sweeter when it does come together. I guess basically to recap here, just the things that I've learned um, is you can't always, you can't wait on a pattern on some of these mature bucks. You just have to get in their area and hunt and hunt with the wind and hunt smart and, and hopefully catch up with the deer that you're hunting. Um, and I will likely never have a story again like this um, that's so intense or so much of a game of inches i guess but uh, very fortunate and just happy that i did have a chance to see the deer while hunting and and just all the pictures and everything that i've gotten um, just a crazy fun ride 193 inches of antler congratulations ivan yoder tempo is going to be a buck that i'll never forget as you can see, Javen is really trying to use all his tactics that he can as far as Spartan cameras, everything in his arsenal, you know, and it's just like, it's just weird. It's like this deer is on to Javen as much as, you know, Javen was on to the deer. And sometimes it just works that way. Not everything works out the way we want it to. You can gather all the information you want. And I truly feel that like sometimes we're just not meant to kill one of these deer. I mean, and unfortunately for Javen, I almost feel like this is what happened for him. I mean, but what a chase. This deer taught Javen a lot. I mean, it really gave him something to look forward to. And you know, one thing where I was really proud of Javen is how he handled it when Tempo got killed by the neighbor. Um, you know, Javen congratulated Ivan. He was very nice about it. And he just understood and he was well accepted in his heart that this could happen. The information that, you know, these Spartan cameras can give us, as you can see by this video, um, just it's in pair, it's in, it's just infutable the you know the information that you can gather how you can use it um, and how many times we've been successful because of the Spartan cameras you know a lot of the sponsors that we have you know mixing like Spartan cameras with the black widow deer lures on mock scrapes and things like that it just it just gives you so much information where you can start narrowing down these deer and what they're doing and you're not infiltrating their area all the time it's just a great tool that's you know just I don't know, it's one of the best things out there as far as I'm concerned to not pressure your property. Thanks for watching this episode of Whitetail Edge. Tune in for the next episode coming soon. Hey, if you guys already aren't subscribers to Whitetail Edge, you know, please do so. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Mossy Oak Go because this is where all our content lands first is right here on Mossy Oak Go.